Hey folks, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in. Well, as you can see, this ground looks nothing like my last video. There's a bunch of snow. <laughs> I'm actually up about six hours north of where I live. I had some business to do up here, so I figured let's make a trip of it. I drove all day yesterday in a snowstorm, continued my drive this morning with a red sun. I hiked my butt in, and now I'm at this spot. This is a pine forest. There's nobody around. I see a couple deer tracks here and there. I only have my Wildland Scout Pack. I'm gonna spend two nights here. I need to make a shelter. I need to make a huge fire because tonight it's gonna to get down to negative 10 degrees Celsius and I only have a negative seven degrees Celsius bag. So that means a, a, a good shelter and a good fire need to happen tonight. So we have to search around now for a suitable site with building materials and a bunch of firewood. Okay, so you can see all in front of me, I've cleared up quite a, quite a big area. My plan is to make a lean-to with a raised bed between this tree, this tree here. I'll do a wall there to block the wind because the wind's coming this way. And I don't want my shelter back to the wind or front to the wind. I want it sideways to the wind for, for smoke um, escape. So that's what I'm going to do. Right now I have to go search for some wood, get a bed made. That was easy enough. Just trying to clean up these pokies because this is going to be for my bed. Here's my bed. Pretty good, but it's a bit wobbly. So I've made up some stakes. I want to pound the stakes in to keep it in place. I like the height and I like the springiness. It's got some bounce to it. So I'll be good for sleeping. I still gotta get uh, insulation material on top of it, which could be difficult in the snow. So I got these long, thick stakes. I chamfered the ends so that they're not gonna mushroom out when I pound them in. And the bed wants to roll that way, so I'm gonna attempt to put them on this side to keep it from stop stop it from rolling. The ground's not frozen yet, so I'm still able to pound these in. See, so still started to mushroom out a little bit, but better than it would have been. Oh, oh, that's perfect. That feels good. So I can even, it's pretty long. I have plenty of room, head height and foot height. Plenty of room width wise. So to start my fire, I've got some birch bark. Don't, I don't get to play with this stuff too much at home because it doesn't grow there. But here, it's abundant. I'm just, all I'm doing is making it thin. See how it's kind of thick and curls up? I'm just peeling layers off. Like, um, yeah, like layers. You know what layers are. Just peeling layers off. Gonna rough them up, and then it'll accept my spark from my fire steel. I do have a backup lighter, but we're bushcrafting, right? We're playing bushcraft right now.
Okay, I gotta try to do this quick. I got a piece of wood in my eye. Like a, uh, ah, a chip of wood. So, other than the obvious reason to bring your, ah, to bring your compass, there's a mirror on it as well. Oh. Oh man, did I get it? I can't, I don't, oh, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Ah. It's a bad feeling, eh? Oh, it's right in the corner, man. This is a good idea to wear glasses, guys. Like, it's not very bright at all, but I've been seeing it a couple times in my videos. I'm always worried about my eyes out here, especially when I'm alone. I'm getting all smoked out too from the fire, it doesn't help. I think I might have got it. <sighs> Just the reality. Just the reality, a tiny little speck, a grain of sand or dirt or moss or leaf or insect or wood. Put a damper on things. I don't know if you can see it, it's on my middle finger. That's what was in my eye. So that's not even that small, relatively. Man, that hurt. Regardless of all the stuff that I have to do still, uh, I don't feel 100% comfortable with having this fire just on the ground here. This is a mainly pine forest. There are some uh, maple and, and oak in here, but this is a mainly, mainly pine forest. And the ground is made up of duff. And as, even though I scraped it down to the dirt and it's soaking wet, and almost frozen and there's a ton of snow around I just if I'm gonna be having a big fire for two days here I don't want to mess something up I don't want to the embers can go down onto the underground and burn on the burn the roots for a long time and then come up and burn a tree or whatever you can start a forest fire and I really don't want that, ha that to happen because I'm out here having fun so I'm gonna go <laughs> scrounge for some rocks and line it line it with rocks and then I'll build a fire reflector and it'll be all contained. This is a score, this one. All right, you can see I've cleaned, cleaned the area of the fire and the ground is smoldering a little bit, so I am making the right choice. It's a lot more work and I really don't want to do it, but uh, it's important. Kind of build it up as a long fire. Just, oh, I just broke my rock with uh, on top of the rocks, right? So the rocks are going to, I'm gonna put the wood on top of the rocks and then I will build a barrier around so that it doesn't wanna roll off. And then a barrier behind it as well. And then I'll probably build a wooden fire reflector. I don't know if I'll build that today or not, just to go up higher. But these rocks will do a good job of retaining the heat and pumping it back to me anyway. So it's all good. It's necessary and I'm doing it. Basically I have this whole big length of this rock to put it on plus a, another platform here. I've got a wall built in the back and on both sides where it's gonna contain the logs from rolling out. It's actually sloping backwards too so they're not gonna roll this way. Um, just for size comparison, here's my ax. It's a 26 inch ax. So it's not as long as I'd like. It's about as half as long as I want it to be but Fire safety is more important, I think. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna freeze to death, so. Clearing these uh, dead pine up here at the camp so I can actually burn the twigs, and not just leave them in the forest. Pro tip, it's actually a Ray Mears tip. 
I stole it. Hashtag Ramirez. Well, there she is. The rib work is done. I gotta get a lot of thatching material, which is gonna be difficult because the duff that I was going to use is covered in snow. I don't got much time. I gotta keep going. The wind is picking up. I can still work on it tomorrow. That's the good thing, but I do have to get the majority of it done tonight because tonight is the cold night. Tonight is the negative 10 night. Tomorrow is only negative four. I still have, and I gotta get a ton of firewood still too. It's a lot of work guys. People think they come out here, build shelter and dick around. I've been go, go, go. And it's, uh, it's a lot of work guys. All right, off to get thatching material. This is that stuff I've been using to, to thatch. It's uh, duff. It's all mixed up with um, snow and dirt and sticks and roots. And all I'm doing is just scuffing it up with my hands and, the, and my feet on the ground. And I get this really nice packing stuff. I'm about done my, my thatching for the shelter now. I'm pretty pleased with that back wall. There's not too many gaps. I'm looking right now on the very end there. There's that like long gap. But other than that, I can't see any daylight through. There's a lot of snow on there, so we'll see what happens when it uh, when it melts. But it is going to get cold, so it might not melt. Um, but I have to get firewood now. I, I would like to build sides, but that's going to have to wait till tomorrow, which is fine. It'll give me like a project for tomorrow. But I have to I have to get firewood and probably build a fire reflector because 3:30 now. It's going to get dark very soon. I got maybe three hours of light tops. That's a really big piece of really solid wood. Oak probably, yeah, that's oak. It's not in the ground, it's actually falling or leaning. So I, I, I'd like to just be able to pull it out if possible. This is gonna be a, a huge bonus to just get this much wood in one tree, as opposed to gathering a bunch of small. And this will burn a lot better and longer, even if I split it down one in the middle. It, it's, it moves. It's gonna be slow going. I'm gonna buck up this log with my boys axe. When you're doing this big, with big uh, pieces of wood, you want to make your notch wide, as wide as your log is around. I want to chop right on a knot too. Fantastic. You don't want to do that. This is really dense oak. It's going to be a good payoff. I'm just going to switch sides now because the other side is like three quarters done. Almost. And I'll carry that back in two pieces and I'll have a heck of a lot of firewood. It's a good feeling. Like money in the bank. Oh, danger bacon. Woo! 
those of you that watched the the gear video for this one, like the, the prep video for this, this trip, will know that I didn't bring a sleeping pad or a tarp, and I brought only my negative seven Celsius sleeping bag. The reason I did that was because I was trying to go as little amount of items as possible. This sleeping bag fit the best on the bottom. I could have used my negative 10 sleeping, Celsius sleeping bag, but it's probably double the width of this and it was too bulky. So I don't have a sleeping pad, okay? That's, that's the whole gist of this. And I, on my way, in preparation for this trip, I didn't expect there to be this much snow, if any. Uh, this came like yesterday. So I was planning on using Duff as my insulation bed and then just putting my Reflectix over top of it to keep it, because I knew it was going to be a little bit damp, but there's no way that I can do that. It's just going to be mounds of snow. Maybe tomorrow, if some of the snow melts, I can dry it off by my shelter, like the duff, but I can't tonight. Um, so that, that leaves me with sleeping on my Reflectix, which is does not have even a, an R value, I'm sure, in my sleeping bag that's not rated to how cold it's going to get tonight. So I have to really rely on, I, I know I'm gonna be up feeding the fire a lot, probably every hour. I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is take rocks and put them underneath my bed, cause there's a big distance. I'm gonna clear out all the duff underneath there. There's a good, I don't know, eight inches between there and the ground. And I'll put the hot rocks under there and warm up that way. And what I'll also do is before I go to bed, I'll boil some water, put it in my Nalgene and put that in my sleeping bag with me. I, I'm confident I'm gonna be okay. It's going to be a cold night. It's gonna be probably not the best sleep I've had, but that's okay. We're out here doing a minimalist kind of bushcraft thing, so I, I'm cool, I, I'm, I'm cool with that. The best use of my time right now is to make a fire reflector because I'm sitting there in my shelter and a lot of the heat's just escaping. Hit a rock, son of a gun. Dry his gloves out, hopefully. The fire reflector's helping big time. I'm actually warming up quite a bit. I'm gonna lose this wool so I don't want to start sweating. I've been trying to stay somewhat dry today because I'm spending all of tomorrow and tomorrow night out as well with the same gear. Uh, my gloves are soaked, my knees are soaked, my butt's wet, my feet are wet. Uh, my feet are wet from sweat, everything else from snow. Make sure my glove doesn't burn here. But yeah, I know this fire reflector is uh, <laughs> doing the trick, man. So I feel, feel nice and comfortable right now, nice and warm but I'm sure I'll need to put those layers back on in, in a couple minutes. I'm gonna cook up my steak here real soon. I'm gonna brush the coals aside, continue having a fire, just uh, cook on the one side. I don't have anything to cook my steak on, so it'll be right on the coals this time, no grill or nothing. I'm having a good time, man. I freaking busted my butt today, I'll tell you. Like, from the time I started, like nine o'clock, even less than that, eight o'clock, I don't even know anymore, but it's 5.30 now. It's a long day. It's a full work day. I'm hungry. Oh, my whiskey. I brought some whiskey. Brought some whiskey. Maybe we'll have a little swig after uh, after the steak is done. Looking forward to that. So I got my Angus steak. And uh, I didn't bring, like I said, anything to cook it on. But I'm not a... I'm not a peasant, you know, you gotta have a little bit of a little bit of steak spice on that piece. Some Montreal steak spice on this guy. Um, save a little bit for the other side. Not too much this time. Cooking it on the coals gives it a good taste anyway. It's a nice big fat steak. I like ribeye, I prefer ribeye, but this is a New York, because that's what they had, New York strip. Fire pit's working out okay. Just move some stuff over to this side. A 
Bam. We're doing it right on the coals. That wind is whipping through here. Reminding me I need to still make a side on that shelter. Took the steak off, it's gonna sit for five minutes. And we'll stoke the fire back up. This is one of those big rounds. Probably the other side of this plate, actually. Not too shabby. Steak's really good. Hitting the spot, man. Time to do the dishes. Better than paper plates. I used one huge section of that big log that I got with the exception of these three logs here. So I pounded a stake into the ground and I'm gonna use that as a beginning to a wall just as a wind block for tonight. And then I'm gonna put my backpack here. Should be good. Preheated these pieces of wood. They're stacked on other pieces of wood, but I preheated them by the fire to put my feet on. <laughs> They're a little icy before, so I figured why not just not dry them off but warm them up. Oh, it feels nice. Heated floors, guys. Heated floors up in this piece. Bushcraft. That worked like a charm. My feet are dry and toasty now too. <laughs> my um, my gloves are actually. 90% dry if you can see it's all dry here just a little patch here is wet and they were soaked through earlier today This is a, a rock and hot fire. I'm super glad I did the rock thing underneath it It would have just been so irresponsible to continue and have a big fire like this right on the on the open ground here Not everywhere. I'm not saying everywhere is like that. Just this this spot the this, all the pine duff. It's it's very dangerous In the middle of the winter. I wouldn't worry about it all right, got the 40 Creek. It's been a while. Ah. So I feel like I'm losing a lot of heat up it's the temperature is dropping pretty quick i have that mylar bl blanket that space blanket and i figure if i tie it off to the ridge pole directly to the ridge pole tight and then slope it down gradually not close enough to the fire where it's gonna get burned obviously but sloping down i think that it'll make the heat it'll trap the heat that's going up and swirl it back down into me here. I'll take it down in the day and uh, and show you how I did it. But I can feel warmth from it. I can feel radiating heat coming from it. The only problem is it's a little crinkly, but I can deal with it. So I'm happy with that. A little improvement, a little improvement on the old shack, the old shanty. There's an awesome old book. Dan Beard is the author maybe, maybe but it's called Shelters, Shacks, and Shanties. Awesome book, if you can find it. That one hair on my chest is growing real long. I ended up having to move the space blanket. It was creating a ton of heat in here, and all of the snow that was inside the duff that I packed on the back of my shelter was, mel was melting and dripping all over my sleeping bag. And I tried bunching my sleeping bag up and it was just dripping all over me. It was getting the whole bed wet. So I ended up untying it from the two points that were out there and just tying it down back behind me. So this is the back wall of my shelter. 
it's not doing half as much. I can still feel warmth here. It's not doing half as much. That other angle set up with the angle down, that is on point. But the snow in the duff, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't pick it out. If it does drip, it's gonna even just stay on the back side of this mylar and run right down past my bed now. I'm gonna lay down, I'm gonna stoke the fire and lay down for the night. I'm sure I'll be getting up to stoke the fire every couple hours, so I imagine I'll uh, I'll check in with you guys periodically through the night. If not, have a good night and I'll see you in the morning. But I highly doubt that. Oh, slept till two. Got cold. Now it's time to stoke the fire. It was a pretty good run, pretty good, pretty good run of sleep. I imagine that'll be the, the longest run I get, but I'm happy to get it. Good night again. Good morning. That was a rough sleep, guys. That was really rough. The, uh, the Reflectix that I put down underneath me didn't do the job. I knew it wouldn't. You have to have some kind of loft, some kind of insulating loft underneath you. The sleeping bag actually did a pretty decent job. I don't think it got down to negative 10. I left my watch out uh, a couple times between um, stoking the fire over there, hung up on a tree. And the coldest I ever saw it say was negative 6. So who knows? Uh, it might have got colder. It might not have. My watch might not work. It might have been negative 6. I don't know. But seeing as how I wasn't dying cold, I don't imagine it did get down past or around to negative 10. But the problem was where I was laying, my hip, my back, my shoulders, all like pushing the down, squishing the down in my sleeping bag, gives me no insulation underneath. And now they're just freezing and, and sore from, from basically fetal, fetal position all night. But I got up a few times to stoke the fire. I think I, I checked in with you guys one time. Um, I burned the back reflector. <laughs> the fire reflector got burned. So uh, yeah, but... It's all good. I got up. I, I rubbed it in the snow and put it back together. So it's fine. All while shivering uncontrollably. But good night. And uh, hopefully t tonight will be a better night. I slept for a good chunk right off the hop. When I checked in with you guys, it wasn't 2 in the morning. It was 12. I, I rubbed my freaking clock wrong because, or my watch wrong because when I got up the next time, it was only 2. So that fire had only been going for 2 hours when I stoked it. Stoked it probably two, three times, I think. And then the last time was around four and it's seven now so it's completely done i gotta get a fire going it's the name of the game so just tying up a couple small tripods for to make cooking and boiling water easier more convenient so all i'm doing is tying a couple overhand knots on three pieces of small dead pine and i've already built one and then I just need to get a cross piece to go across. This should be good. This is right from the butcher. Some smoked bacon. Three pieces of thick bacon. And then I'm going to go with my eggs at the same time. Well, my eggs must have froze and exploded. Because they were fine last night. Yeah, they're frozen. Let's, uh, let's just try to cook them. Anyways, that should be fine. That'll work. I'm not concerned about that too much. I did lose a little bit of the, the white. But, who are we kidding? The yolk is the good part anyway. Bleh. Oh, big old shell in there. Get in there! Get in there! You too good for your home? That's another 90s movie trivia right there. Are you too good for your home? So I got some boiled water already. I had to boil it because I needed some for drinking. So that's gonna go in there. That's gonna go back on the fire and cook up with my bacons. Might be a nice day today. We're getting some sun, that's for sure. This whole woods is lit up. It's 
awesome, man. Seeing the snow on the trees with the sunlight reflecting on it. I love winter camping. I didn't expect this to be winter camping. I expected a late fall camping trip. <laughs> the weather we had like three days ago was record highs. And then a big old snow dump. So last night I was saying how I, uh, I tied up this space blanket and I, would, I wanted to show you guys how I did it. So basically I just made these buttons and they're just made out of duff. And I just made a ball, tucked it in, tied it off, and then tied four corners respectively where they needed to go. So what I think I'm gonna do today, because I don't really care to stare at the silver mylar all day, is I'll just roll, roll it up and leave it tucked up at the top on the ridge pole here. Ah, oh, hot, hot, hot. Everything is done. Finally. Now I got some food done, and I'll throw some pine needles into that boiling hot water. The spork is probably a better idea. I'll let that steep. And have a nice little brekkie. Nice little brekkie copper. Big home. Yeah. That's what bacon's supposed to taste like. My thin, thin eggs, because there's no whites in there. It's about the equivalent of one, maybe one and a half eggs. Oh, man. My nose is running off my face. Ah, I feel rejuvenated. I'm going to put my bacon in my eggs. Live a little, eh? Woo! Oh, that feels good on the stomach. <clears throat> All right, I'm cold. I'm chilled to the bone. My feet are numb. And I need firewood for today. So I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. I'm gonna go for a hike and warm up my toes because if you go on a 20 minute hike in boots, regardless of the temperature, your toes are gonna warm up. And I'll scope out firewood at the same time. I don't have any tools with me, but a lot of the times I've been able to just uh, push the trees over, push the firewood over. So that's what we're doing, walking towards the sun. So this was my makeshift wall last night, but this is really good firewood and it's not a good job of a wall. So we're going to remove all this.
So I got these pegs arranged in such a way where they're like crisscrossing one on one side, one on the other, creating tension. I've got to pry them apart to get the logs through, but that's good because it'll be a tight, super tight fit. Pretty happy about my wall now, but I do want to tie these two poles together just to give it a little bit more structure. So I'm going to tie a Canadian jam knot, the same knot that I use to tie up this shelter, same knot I use all the time. Just torque it as much as I can. You have it that's on there i just got back from a walk to go get some water filled up my nalgene in another small titanium container i got back to my shelter and i uh, boiled up my titanium bottle and i used some drops for my nalgene when i went to go get the water i brought my empty backpack and i, I was able to grab some leaves like just my backpack full of oak leaves off trees which isn't going to do much uh, for my bed tonight but i also saw a downed pine with a bunch of limbs that i can use um the the, the needles are gone they're, they're rotted and brown and falling off or gone but the 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 twigs themselves are very uh very thin and and almost springy so what i think i'm going to do is take this space blanket down off of here collect a bunch of those and then wrap wrap the the twigs on my bed into the spade in the space blanket put my reflectix down after that and uh hopefully that'll get me a, like a more of a buffer you know what i mean just off of the off the, the off the logs basically just pounding some stakes in to try to contain um the bedding that i'm going to put in the twigs so they're not just falling everywhere Put one there, one there, put one on the back, and then I have the previous ones that I was already using for my bed. Doesn't that look comfortable? A nice, comfortable bed of sticks. That's just one armful. But you can see what I mean about springy. I gotta get a bunch more, and I gotta layer them on. It could be, it could be something. And then wrapped in my space blanket, and the space blanket's gonna give me some kind of retaining, retain some kind of warmth as well. It'll be better than nothing, for sure. Ideally, I was going to use duff. I can't sift the snow out of it. I can't sit it here to get dry. It, it's soaking wet. It's soaking wet with snow on top of it. So this is the alternative. Okay. So I think this batch does it. I'm going to crunch down on these as hard as I can. Yeah, man, I do have some loft. And that... The reflectix on top will be the lifesaver for sure. Once again, I gotta flatten these out as much as possible. Uh, I'm exhausted, guys. <laughs> so I'm just using these buttons that I had tied on already from last night, and the cord that's on it. I'm wrapping underneath the bed. I'm gonna wrap it in the middle as well. I already did the end down there. I might as well just continue going around like this to secure it even better. 
It's not looking so bad now. It doesn't look like just a pile of sticks anymore. This is all right. It's not so bad. It's much better than just the logs. Comfort wise, I don't know how much added warmth it'll be, but it's better than it was. The bag that I had my spare clothes in, I'm gonna make myself a pillow. A pillow. I told you I wasn't a peasant. Oh yeah, just like home, just like home. I just coming back from getting some water and look what I found, a bonus. I'm gonna grab a bunch of this and make up a tea. It's gonna be dark real soon, the temperature's dropping, I'm getting chilled. So I'm trying to cut up a bunch of firewood right now to warm myself up and to have it for later on. Right here I have one of the big pieces of wood that I got yesterday and I want to split it down. I don't want to saw it any shorter, but I want to split it down. So I made up these wedges of some very, very dense white oak and we're going to try and split it. So there's a natural check or a crack already in the log going down. So I'm going to place the wedge there. have to get it down off this log it doesn't want to stay here this will work nice I thought I might have had to use both wedges at the same time that is beauty right there guys some hard wood, man. Nice. And the wedge is no worse for wear. Very cool. Well, this one was almost twice as long and I just now have to put a second wedge in. Son. I whip myself up a little table, use the tripods that I was using for my cooking, and then one of those slabs that I split down. I figure I will, while I still have some light, I'll prepare my dinner. I'm not going to put it on yet, but I gotta prepare it, like I said. So we're doing Italian sausage, mini potatoes, garlic and onions and butter in tinfoil. I got some salt and pepper. Put a lot of onion, I want to put a lot of garlic, lots of potatoes, hopefully lots of sausage. We'll see how much it turns out to be. So I'm just cutting it up, big chunks, and then it'll go right in with my potatoes onions, all that fun stuff. So there's lots of butter in there. Get the remaining garlic pieces. And I want to make it kind of flat, as flat as possible actually. So I'm going to try and smoosh it out a bit. Bury that butter in there.
And I'm gonna wrap it again. I'm gonna wrap it the other way so that the ends get nice and protected. Well, I'm really hungry. I'm hoping this is done. I think it is. Oh, potatoes are soft. That's the tell. Sausage. Sausage is cooked. Mmm. Let's go my salt and pepper tubes. Throw those ends in the fire. First up, salt. Can never have too much salt, right? Never hurt nobody at all. And pepper. The bam. So good. The Italian sausage was a very good call. I had done this before with ground beef or with um, a little steak and stuff like that. But the Italian sausage already had, it wasn't cooked, <coughs> excuse me, but it had seasonings in it. It was from the butcher. So that alone had a ton of seasonings in it. I put the, the garlic, the butter, salt, pepper, all that fun stuff in there. Um, onions. So very flavorful. Very flavorful. That was super tasty. Now I sit. I can hear coyotes. I heard them last night a lot yipping throughout the night when I was getting up to uh, feed the fire and stuff. But this is still early. This is like 8 o'clock. That's pretty cool. Maybe they'll start going again. Look at this lighting, eh? Look at the lighting. This fire, man. Gotta love it. I've got a much better fire tonight. It's much longer, hotter. The coal base is way better. I don't know what the deal was yesterday. Maybe I wasn't burning long enough pieces. Or maybe it was too cold out. I don't know, on top of the rocks. It was weird. It was like I couldn't, I was always struggling to keep a coal base. But with this, like, it's freaking roasting hot. And I've got tons of embers, tons of coals. But it's warm tonight. Like, I don't know what the temperature is. I want to put my watch out there soon. Right now, I've got, um, sorry, I've got my watch hanging up. It says 16.2. You can see that uh, on the bottom there. Anyway, 16.2 degrees Celsius. And that's right there, which is not quite at the top of the of the um, shelter. But all these all these poles are all warm to, to the touch. Like, no doubt about it. Down here below me, behind, they're cold where they're not reach, getting any of the fire. But all the ones up here are all very warm. The ridge pole especially. Oh, piss. There's my watch. Okay, it was up to 17.2. Now it's down to 16.9. We're calling it good at 16.9. Let's go hanging in the tree out in the cold. I'll give it about a half an hour or so. How will I know when a half an hour's up? I don't have a watch. The watch is in the tree. The tree took my watch. Ooh. Shouldn't have done that. Okay, let's go check the old watch. 1.6. And it's been like that for a while. Just because I'm bored out of my skull, I'm gonna hang it again and get a second reading in here. It's at four degrees Celsius now. It was supposed to be negative four degrees Celsius, 
but I don't think that's happening tonight. We shall see, but feels to be about zero. What's zero, like 32? 32 Fahrenheit, 30? It's such a nice night, man. There's no wind at all. It's a big old fire. I'm completely warm. It's warm out. It's a good night. I'm gonna sleep really well. I'm tired, man. Not sleeping that great last night. Working both days. Today I didn't work much, to be honest. I I, I built that bed. I cut a lot of firewood. I built that wall. It's still decent. Like I had, um, I had more camp life, I guess this this trip than normal. Today I I was I was busy all day today, but I was not rushed. I didn't feel rushed at all. And yesterday I did a lot. Hiked in, found a spot, set up shelter, firewood, cook, all that fun stuff. Yesterday was rushed. Yesterday I I freaking. Busted my hump moving around. Today was good. It was a good trip, man. It was a little, like I said, a little bit more camp life, which is kind of cool. I like it. Two nights solo, doing this kind of stuff, it's not too bad at all. This is the time of year for this kind of stuff. I knew it was going to be cold. I didn't know there was going to be snow. But no big deal. I'm glad there was. It's a good change. It's a good, like, abrupt, rude awakening into, like, winter's here now. This isn't, like, a freak thing. I don't think the, the snow is going to melt and it's going to get warm again. You know what I mean? It's late November, so. What do we got? Can you see? Where are we? Where are we? We got 14.2 uh, Celsius right now. So we'll see. We'll see if it goes up any more from that. I'm standing out here right now away from the fire to cool down. There's a humongous long fire, like a proper long fire, the one I should have been doing the whole time. I'm going to bed. I'll see you guys in the morning. Wish me luck. Good night. Good morning. Seven in the morning. I slept better than I did last night. It stayed warmer. It snowed quite a bit last night, but I stayed nice and dry in here. I got to get up pack up and hike my butt out of here You can see, really see how much they crunched down. Lost all of the, the springiness and the law, but it did the trick. I wasn't half as cold last night. I actually fell asleep last night uh, in my full clothes and my boots on top of my sleeping bag next to the fire. Okay guys, this has to be it. My battery's flashing at me on my last bar, on my last battery. I'm not gonna cook breakfast this morning because I don't wanna start another fire. Um, that one's out, it's done. So I'm just gonna eat granola bars and get up and get out of here. I got a, I don't know, about an hour hike to get out and then I have a six hour car ride home. So I don't wanna dawdle, no dawdling. All right guys, listen, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really had a fun time. Um, yeah, it was a good eye-opening winter here we come experience going from hot weather to this within the matter of a few days. So, yeah, more winter stuff to come. Lots of videos. I uh, I have uh, an Instagram account that I put tons of pictures on. Uh, I'll be putting a bunch of pictures on from this trip as well. If you guys have Instagram, feel free to follow me. Uh, you'll see lots of more action from me there as well. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. I'll see you on the next one. Granola out.